messenger, the Reverend Pastor James Daniels. Pastor Daniels, are you on? Yes, sir, I'm on. All right, it's in your hands. Amen. Uh, we say good evening to everyone. We pray that your week up, this, up to this point have been blessed and hearing the testimonies on the line tonight makes us feel excited that we're still here standing on God's promises. Truly want to thank God for this moment, this opportunity. Amen. Our core rate of Pastor Reynolds and the Living Waters Ministry, all other ministers, pastors that are on the line tonight, I say blessings to each of you. Let us have a word of prayer. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we come tonight thanking you, thanking you as we prepare to exit the eighth month and head into the ninth month. You have kept us. Father God, you have been there every step of the way, sometimes up, sometimes down, but through it all, we count it all joy that you have sustained us, that you have blessed us, that you have kept us. So tonight, Father God, as I prepare to speak a word from heaven, I ask you to, Father God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. For, Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. And these and all blessings we ask in thy son Jesus' name. I ask it all, and I do say amen, amen, and amen. My brothers and sisters, tonight, as I was preparing for the upcoming Sunday School lesson, I ran past a passage of Scripture that touched my heart, touched my spirit, and I thought it would be uh, nice or blessed tonight to share what my thoughts in my study was. And if you have your Bibles or your devices, we ask you to turn with us to Genesis. Genesis, the 22nd chapter, verses 1 and 2. We'll use verse 1 through 14, but for the sake of time, we would just like to lift verses 1 and 2. Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 and 2. And you'll find these words penned. And it came to pass, after these things, that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. Verse 2, And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. For a few moments tonight, I would like to speak from this subject. It's just a test. It's just a test. My brothers and sisters, when we look at this particular passage of Scripture, Abraham, whose name was Abram, is well known throughout the Bible. He's most commonly known as the father of faith and the one who obeyed God, who left his family and friends behind only to seek God's will and purpose for his life. And it is true tonight, my brothers and sisters, that God had a purpose for Abraham, and he also has a purpose for you and I as well. Well, I, I, I did some research, and I, I, I understand that every now and then, the people in every city or town often test the sirens, the, the tornado sirens, to ensure in case of a tornado, they want to make sure they're working, even on the radio. They play a loud song. They say it's only a test. And they mention all the places where the test is going on. Here in Columbus area, on Saturday mornings at 12 o'clock noon, they remind us that it's just a test. Have you ever thought about being tested by God? Well, we know, my brothers and sisters, that tests can be seen as a part of life. 
I, just recently, a few years now, we're, we're coming out of the pandemic. But do you know that the pandemic was just a test? Do you know as children growing up, the educational system presented us a series of tests? What was it? It was meant to test one's ability and skills. Do you know what pop quizzes are? Pop quizzes was to see whether or not you read your homework, whether or not you did your assignment. And my brothers and sisters, in the spiritual realm, God uses a series of tests to test our faith, to develop our character. Here it is. Job endured a test. The Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 4 endured a test when the Spirit led him into the wilderness. And he came out and met that old evil person by the name of Satan. It's only a test. Can I encourage you tonight that a faith that is never tested is really no faith at all. Even new equipment, devices, cars, have to be tested. And in our text tonight, the word temp in this context means test. I mean, can I break it down a little bit? An examination, a trial, or experiment. It really don't matter which word you, you really want to use. The key word is God is doing the testing. The question is, will you be ready when he tests you? Will you be ready when he call on you? Will you be ready when he calls your name and say, I need you to do something? So God gave Abraham a test. Listen, not to trip him up, not to watch him fall, but to deepen his capacity to obey God. And thus, this will develop his character. God often used men and women to be the vehicle to carry out his promises. Just as a fire refines or extracts precious metal, gold, or even diamond, God refines us through difficult circumstances. My brothers and sisters, it's easy to want to take the elevator and go up to the mountaintop. It's easy to want to not go through any trials and tribulation. It's easy to say, well, I'm glad it never storms. I'm glad it never rains. It's easy to say, I'm glad I never go through the valley. But it's those circumstances that, that helps us to see God's hand in our life. When we're tested, we can either complain or we can try to see how God is stretching us to develop our character. When we examine the scripture, it's important that we use spiritual lenses and prepare to see what God is speaking through the text. Because in this text, we must understand that Moriah is close to Calvary. Because except Calvary itself, it's more pregnant than this one. There's no other clear foreshadow of death of God's only and beloved son on the cross. We must see God's intention here that one day he will have to let his son die for the world. So my brothers and sisters, the supreme test of Abraham's faith came when God ordered him to offer up Isaac as a burnt offering in the land of Moriah. Actually, God had no intentions of allowing Abraham to go through with it, but it was simply a test, a test to see whether or not Abraham would obey the call. So my question tonight, are you prepared to give up those things that you love so God will know that you love him more? Are you prepared to give up your material possession? Are you prepared to give up those things or any way with your relationship 
with the true and living God. My brothers and sisters, my Abraham was willing to sacrifice his only son, the, the son of promise, by the name of Isaac, to know that God loved him. Hmm. So, my brothers and sisters, God's word, your only son Isaac, whom love, must have hurt Abraham's heart. Wouldn't it have hurt your heart if you had to offer up your only son? We would say things like, what about my credentials? What about my family history? We, we would have came up with all of these things, thinking of ways that we can get out of sacrificing our only son. But Abraham said, listen, I got to do this because God has been good to me. He has been faithful to me. And because he has been faithful to me, I must obey his command. That's right, that's right. So my brothers and sisters, when we look at this scripture, two words ring out. Abraham's love for his son is a faint picture of God's love for the Lord Jesus. In other words, the two words is love and worship. It's found in this story, love and worship. Listen what Abraham said. Listen, you two men stay here while me and the lad go yonder and we're going to worship and we're going to come back. That's faith knowing that he's coming back. Although he knows he has to sacrifice his only son. Listen, the greatest act of worship is to give up everything with the understanding that God will provide. God will provide. All he asks of us is to release whatever's in our hand and God promise to bless it. So my brothers and sisters, to offer up Isaac was the supreme test of Abraham's faith. God had promised to give Abraham a numberless posterity through his son. At this time, Isaac must have been around 25 years of age, and he was unmarried. If Abraham slew him, how could the promise be fulfilled? Well, Abraham understood that even if he sacrificed his son, God had the power to resurrect him from the dead. Again, this is a foreshadow of Calvary that Jesus would one day lay down his life with the understanding that his father would resurrect his life. My brothers and sisters, all I'm simply saying tonight, Abraham was first justified by faith. It was not his work. It was justified by faith. His faith was the means of his salvation. Why his work was proof of the reality of his faith. When Isaac asked the question, where is the lamb? His father replied, God will provide for himself the lamb. Listen, he said, where is the lamb? The son is kind of curious now. He done built the altar. He done put the wood. He done did everything. He done bind the son up. And all he's ready to do is sacrifice him. But the son said, where is the lamb? This promise was ultimately fulfilled by the ram in verse 13. But we must look forward to the Lamb of God in John 1, 29. The Lamb of God, the one who would go and be the sins for the entire world. So let me get out of here tonight. Listen, there's three things in this text that caught my eye. The first thing tonight is the attention. God will always get your attention. No matter where you are in life, God has a way of getting your attention in order to obey his command. I can prove it to you because in Genesis 12, God appeared to Abram one day and promised to make his descendants a great nation. Through the scripture, we learned that no man is perfect, but through it all, we must remain faithful. Here it is. It said, now the Lord 
had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindreds, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will shew thee. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land, and there builded he an altar unto the Lord, who appeared. All I'm simply saying, God will always get your attention. But the question is, God is always talking. But we ain't always listening. Here it is in the text. In Genesis 22, verse 1 and 2, and it said, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. So he recognized that God was speaking to him. God got his attention. The question tonight is, are you listening? Have God been trying to get your attention? Have God sent you through some trials and tribulation? We can't blame everything on the devil. Sometimes God used different things to get our attention. But the question is, will you obey the call? The second thing in the text we see tonight is action. After God gets our attention, part of the agreement is to obey God. <laughs> Action calls for movement, even if we don't understand the task fully. Here it is, Genesis 12 and 4. So Abraham departed, and as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him, and Abram was 70 and 5 years old when he departed out of Haran. Listen, That's right. That's right. obeying God is often a struggle for many people, because it may mean giving up something we truly want or want to keep. Faith is a vehicle that takes us to the places where God wants us to be. Listen, faith is trusting God's movement in our lives, being confident that he has a plan for our lives. When we are fortified by this, we can step out and take action when we feel where God is calling us. And here it is, lastly tonight. There is application. God has gifted every man with a measure of faith, but many never apply it. Application requires one to hope for what he does not see. Application requires us to trust the process and take God at his word. Living faith makes a difference. We should always seek ways to putting our faith to work. Commitment to love and serve others is evidence of true faith. We've all heard the saying, seeing is believing. As Christians, however, we're called to believe what we cannot see. That's what our faith is. The belief in God's goodness, his love, his will for our life, even when we cannot see or understand it in the present moment. Taking a leap of faith is demonstration of that belief and courage in the proclamation of we love God and that we want to follow his path in our lives. So as we hasten to a close tonight, the whole saying reminds us that love is not what it says, but love is what it does. Everything that God asks Abraham to do is an outlook on what he would do to save his creation. Abraham's sacrifice of Isaac was hinged on love, and God's sacrifice of his only begotten son was also hinged on love. Here it is. John 3.16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God told Abraham to go to the land called Moriah, which Moriah is similar to Calvary. God will use Calvary as his method to redeem mankind from his sin. You said, what's the importance of Calvary? It was Jesus who went to Calvary with an old rugged cross on his shoulder, and he marched up that old rugged hill 
with you and me in mind. He gave his hands to the nail, his feet to the rivet for you and I. Listen, it was only a test. Jesus was tested so we could be free. There on the cross, they lifted him. And he said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men under me. Ain't you glad it's just a test? Jesus took the test. But he passed the test. Here's how I know he passed the test. As he hung his head in the locks of his shoulder, he said, it's finished. What's finished? Salvation is finished. Redemption is finished. His blood will never lose its power. It's finished. Salvation. God's redemption plan out on Calvary was now complete. It is finished. But I'm glad. That was a borrowed tomb waiting on him. And anything borrowed, you know you got to give it back. So on Friday, he's there in the grave. On Saturday morning, he's there in the grave. On Saturday evening, the call was that he's still here. He's still in the grave. But I'm glad for Sunday morning. Anybody glad tonight for Sunday morning? I'm glad for Sunday morning because he's no longer in the grave. He got up out of that old grave with all power in his hand. And I'm glad that my Lord and my Savior, he completed the test. He completed the test for you and for me. And I give glory to God who also allowed us to be tested. May God bless you. May keep you is our prayer. Back in your hands, Pastor Reynolds.